Hello everyone, my name is Shane and I will be presenting the concurrent optimization of mechanical design and control for flapless Samara inspired auto rotating aerial robot. First up, a little background on the aerial robot. It is a platform designed for precision airdrops of small payloads such as electronic sensors. Its method of flying is inspired by the falling of maple seeds, also known as auto rotation. Some of the previous works include the guided Samara which attempted to use a vertical fin at the end of the wing. Its experiments were inconclusive due to a number of reasons and did not achieve directional control. Next is the electromechanical samara. The work focused on low-cost manufacturing by combining electro-aeromechanical structures and lacked any actuation for directional control. Lastly, it is our previous work on samara autorotating wing. The prototype featured a large flap which it uses for direction control. So far, this was the only documented effort that achieved direction control on an actuating single wing platform. So here, we will use a thruster instead of a flap. A quick comparison between a flap and a thruster. The blue region is the region where aerodynamic forces are produced. The red region is where the actuator is. Obviously, as the thruster is smaller and lighter, it can be placed at many different locations on the platform. The benefit of the flap is that it can generate a large force without drawing too much power. As for the thruster, it can be placed at any location for a specific application of force. Also, it does not draw any power when it is not used. As for the drawbacks, the actuator of the flap must be only placed near the seat due to the CG requirements, and it draws power to hold its angle even when it is not actuating. As for the thruster, it might consume more power when intensively used. We first develop a dynamic model. The platform consists of a seed portion which all the electronics and battery is located. It is a wing that consists of both balsa and foam, and the foam portion is set at a fixed angle to assist with auto rotation. A thrust unit consists of a small motor and propeller. So all the forces acting on the platform are gravitational force, aerodynamic force from the wing leading edge and the trailing edge, and the thrust from the motor. In order to find the aerodynamic forces from the wing, we use blade element theory. It splits the wing into several small blade elements and calculates the lift and drag forces from each element. Since the wing is built from flat balsa and foam, we use flat plate airfoil to find the coefficients of lift and drag. The relative air velocity may come from above or below the blade element in dynamic situations. To cater for this, we have two cases when calculating the resolved normal and axial forces. The motor control signal is given by a square cyclic controller. Basically, it switches to a higher or lower thrust depending on the heading angle as the platform rotates. T is the thrust control signal, TO is the offset thrust value, and T amp is the amplitude of the increase in thrust. Theta Z is the heading angle of the platform, so this value is constantly increasing. Lambda C is the desired direction of movement, and lambda off is the value adjusted to compensate for any gyroscopic effects. The blue dashed line is the control signal sent to the thruster. During certain periods of one cycle of rotation, it increases its output by T amp. The platform can therefore achieve translational motion. Here is a basic simulation setup inside MATLAB Simulink. It consists of a rigid body dynamics portion which calculates the six DOF equations. The rigid body is constructed using files exported from SOLIDWORKS to compute their exact masses and moments of inertia. The electronic swashplate subsystem implements the square cyclic control mentioned previously and the last subsystem calculates the aerodynamic forces from the wing and thruster. Lastly, data from various states are captured for evaluation within the optimization loop. So here we set up the optimization problem. We want to find both the location orientation of the thrust unit and the control parameters to achieve the best glide slope. The shape of the wing is given from a polynomial equation found from an optimization in previous work. So here, the variables for mechanical design to be optimized are Px and Py, which define the location of the thruster, and theta, which defines the angle at which the thruster is pointing. 
This table here gives the upper and lower bounds of each parameter. For the optimization problem, we have the following goals. Firstly, we would like to achieve minimum drop speed during the stable autorotation, denoted by function 1, which takes the average values of Vz from certain period in the simulation. Secondly, we target to achieve a rotation rate of about 50 radians per second during the stable autorotation, denoted by function 2. Thirdly, we want to achieve the minimum unwanted oscillations in omega x and y before cyclic control is applied. This is denoted by function 3. Unstable platforms result in growing oscillations in omega x and omega y. Next, minimum unwanted oscillations in omega x and y during cyclic control. Again, this ensures that the platform is stable as it moves under cyclic control. Lastly, we would like to achieve the minimum glide angle, in other words, the best glide slope. This is function 5. These five functions are weighted and combined into a single objective function. We use genetic algorithm in MATLAB to find our optimum solution. Firstly, it begins by generating 100 random solutions. In Simulink setup, these solutions are run through a fixed routine, which includes auto-rotating for 10 seconds with a fixed initial condition, and then moving for 30 seconds using cyclic control. Various data are extracted from the simulations, to measure and evaluate flight performance such as rotation speed, drop speed, and glide angle. The best solution is selected and generated into another 100 samples using mutation functions. This process is repeated until it is stalled for 15 generations or a max generation count is reached. The table here shows the parameters used for the simulation and objective functions. Also shown here are the optimized design and control variables. The optimized location and orientation of the thruster is found and it is shown in this image. It is located near the sea and pointed upwards and slightly backwards. Here is a simulation using optimized parameters. It achieves a steady state drop velocity of minus 3.01 meters per second and a rotation speed of minus 50.89 radians per second. It moves in a straight line under square cyclic control with optimized parameters, achieving a glide angle of 40.9 degrees. It is compared with the non-optimized configurations to evaluate its performance. An arbitrary configuration denoted by A is compared with optimized configuration denoted by O. Both square cyclic control and sine cyclic control are used, denoted by 1 and 2 respectively. A simple waypoint tracking using P controller is simulated. It can be observed that O1 reaches the waypoint fastest, although slightly larger precession circles can be observed for both O1 and O2. We built a physical prototype to experimentally test the flight performance in real world conditions. It consists of a purpose-designed PCB which connects and houses all the electronic components and also acts as the seat structure. The thruster is mounted on a 3D printed body frame built using optimized design configuration. A 3-axis compass senses the heading of the platform and the onboard microcontroller computes the required square cyclic control signals sent to the thruster. The prototype is dropped from about 30 meters by launching from a hand throw. It is observed to enter steady autorotation quite quickly. Next, square cyclic control is applied. The glide angle is measured from a camera positioned orthogonally. It is measured to be about 47.9 degrees. Lastly, here is a video of the entire 30 meter drop. You can hear the motor sound as the cyclic control is applied. A curious bird investigates the prototype as it makes rather bird-like sounds. Thank you for watching.